All right. So this time I want to talk about um, some of the uh, the web services stuff from the assignment. Um, that is uh, mainly this uh, this kind of first problem here, um, and introduce you to a, a really cool trick that uh, that will make uh, some of your some of your uh, stuff for this assignment actually much much easier. Okay, so. You'll notice uh, the, this first problem, this directions.xsl, right? The idea is that uh, that you're going to kind of combine a number of web services, um, that is the Google Directions API and the Google Static Maps API, and ultimately you're going to uh, you're going to produce uh, basically you're going to have a directions XSL file that you'll submit and a directions XML file. The XML file is what is uh, spit out by the directions API that shows um, how to the driving directions from your own house to Broward, uh, Broward North Campus. The XSL that you submit will essentially format that XML into some you know nice looking format for uh, um, presumably HTML. Okay, so that's basically what you need to work on. Now, it's not nearly as bad as it sounds. Okay, so let's actually uh, take a look at some of these things. So, you know, here I have uh, here I have the Google Directions API. This is that link that's uh, right on the assignment. Um, I also have the Static Maps API, again, linked directly from the assignment. Um, the other thing I have here is the Geocoding API. Um, which is which is actually linked um, right here back on the Google Directions API page. Um, there's a link to the geocoding API. Um, and so what I want to show you to, to get you a sense of how to use uh, these things is some examples with the uh, with the geocoding API. Okay, geocoding. Um, in case you're not familiar with it, all it is it's a fancy word for how do you take an address and say a street address and map that to latitude and longitude coordinates okay the good news is you don't really have to there are a number of these services that are built in and google has one that's freely available um, and that will output information in a number of different formats in fact you can see right here the geocoding responses can come either in json or xml for our purposes we're going to use xml okay so you know if we kind of scroll through here you know, again, tells you about geocoding, tells you about uh, some of these things, right? And then get, finally, you get down to the meat. What does a geocoding request look like? Okay. Um, again, it turns out actually these things are really dead simple. Notice it's a URL. Okay. Literally, it's you can take this and put this, um, the beginnings of this, directly into your browser. Okay. So let me show you how uh, how you actually do this. So it says, okay, you use this uh, this particular uh, URL. Um, however, there is there are these two parts: output question mark parameters. Okay, the question mark is definitely going to be there. Output has to be either JSON or XML for our purposes. XML, and then the parameters are the various parts of the way that you actually send the information um, or the information that you want sent to the uh, to the geocoding API. Okay, so for our purposes, we're going to use all of this stuff. Just going to copy. Come over here and paste. So there it goes up to geocode, and we're going to use XML as the output. Then I'm going to have a question mark. Okay, question mark because after the question mark is where I have the parameters. Now, in terms of the parameters, um, there are a few things that you have to have. Okay, um, first of all, you absolutely must have um, the sensor parameter. Okay, and notice what it says is it simply tells uh, tells the Google API is this request coming from from a device that has something like a GPS, so like a cell phone, um, or or is it or is it simply something more like what we're doing, which is simply saying okay, give us the uh, the latitude and longitude for a particular address. Okay, so in our case, what we will have is sensor equals false. Okay. Now the parameters themselves are separated by ampersands. So I'll have an ampersand here, and you can actually see it's already starting to autocomplete because I've tried this already. Um, so I have my sensor, and then the other thing I want is my address. Okay. Notice there's also this lat long because you can provide latitude and longitudes to do a reverse geocoding. Okay. That is go from latitude and longitude to um, street addresses. Okay. So address is uh, is the thing that I'm going to use, and I will say address equals and I'm basically just going to come down here and select um, what I've typed in before namely the address for um, for Broward College North when I hit enter 
here's what I get back. I get back an XML um, response of exactly what information I wanted. Okay, so notice it says, okay, this result was the the status was okay. There's the result. It's a street address. Here's the actual address. And as I scroll down through here, um, writes all kinds of information, etc. Right, and finally I get to viewport that actually gives me latitude and longitude information. Okay, so now that we uh, we have this data in our browser, the question is, how do we actually uh, use this um, with our XSLTs? Okay, basically what you need to do is you need to save this information. Okay, so I'm just going to go up to uh, to my file menu here. I'm going to do a save page as. Um, I've already navigated to the same folder that uh, that my the rest of my XSL stuff is in. Um, make sure you change this to all files and then just give it a name, right? So, for instance, BrowardNorth.xml, right? Um, and yeah, I've already created that, but I'll go ahead and save over anyways, right? So there it goes. It's saved, um, and I can verify that by just coming over here and opening that up in Notepad++. Okay, so there's all of my data, right? So I have this in a file um, where I can actually uh, make use of it. Okay. So now what we need to do is simply to uh, extract the appropriate information and put that in a format that uh, that the Google Maps API can actually understand. Okay, so if I come back over here, um, there's good old, uh, oops, sorry, if I come back to, here's the Static Maps API. Okay, so it turns out that uh, the Static Maps API um, has a way for us to uh, to actually specify um, a latitude and longitude to uh, to view. Okay. So to do that, um, what I'm going to do is just create a, another new file. So I'll go over, um, I'll start with uh, my simple this time. Again, Control-C, Control-V. And I'll call it mapit.xsl. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And um, so now here, let's see, so I don't actually want um, this to specify that I'm dealing with text because I'm not. I'm actually dealing with, uh, with HTML this time. Um, and then we can begin looking at uh, some of these other parts. Okay, so if you, um, if you really wanted to, I mean, what you can do is if you can simply specify all right, that you are in fact going to uh, output HTML, right? So that forces it in uh, directly, saying, "Yeah, you're going to output um, the you're going to output as a, as HTML." <clears throat> okay. So now we don't need any of these. And we actually don't need um, this second part here either. Okay, turns out this is actually a dead simple um, transformation to do. Okay, and and we'll see just how simple that is in a second. Okay, so um, after my match, well, now I'm simply going to specify um, raw HTML, right? So here, uh, for instance, you know we can have an HTML, and I can have a head element for that, and that head element has a title. I'll just say my map. Okay. And then we can have a body. Okay. Now the indentation isn't required here, um, so I could actually have all this stuff flush up to the left, etc. I mean, that would be perfectly acceptable. And then we want our image tag. Okay, so now my image tag basically is going to be um, pretty much every pretty much uh the url that we need for the google static maps api okay now that actually looks like um the following what i'm going to do is is kind of copy and paste some stuff into here um and you'll be able to see what's going on then in a minute okay so there's my there's my um my URL. Okay, so you'll notice that it is in fact it just says image source, etc. Okay, um, and then I basically can uh, can begin to close the rest of these things. So, for instance, here.
Now, I haven't shown you all the magic of what's going on there, but let's actually run this and, and, and see what happens. Okay, so if I, uh, if I have that, and now I just do my java-jar, right, and I believe, and so our data was, make that a bit smaller, there we are, Broward North, okay, our XSL was map it, um, and we're going to output it, to there. Um, okay, so we have a bit of a confusion here. Ah, yes. So, that's right, I forgot to specify the uh, the Saxon jar. Yes, the XML file is not a valid, um, is not in fact a valid jar file. Okay, so Broward North, and map it Okay, so let's see what, what we got there. So we should have um, B North, and we'll open that with Firefox. Let me drag that tab over to here. Okay, now how did that happen? Okay, this is where the uh, this is actually where that really cool trick comes in that I was that I mentioned at the beginning. Okay, so you'll notice the uh, the URL for this um, for the Static Maps API. Okay, so the Static Maps API basically returns an image. Um, doesn't look too different from the from the API we saw before. So we're saying we want a static map. Um, again, one of the things that is required is that uh, that you specify um, the sensor. Uh, here, actually, this seems to be an artifact of the copy and paste. It really, should just be uh, an ampersand there. Um, one of the other required uh, things is that you have to specify the size that. Um, oops, I'm sorry. The size of the map that you want. So you'll notice here I'm specifying a map that is 300 by 300. Um, again, need to, uh, to adjust for our copy and paste. Okay. And then here is the magic part. Okay. So take a look right here. Okay. What this is, what you see in here in markers is this inside of the curly braces, I have an X path expression. Okay, notice it says slash slash geometry location lat. Okay, let me go back over to uh, to actually let me pull it up in XPath Checker. So again, we want geometry location. There's geometry. Okay. Right here's our geometry and notice there's the location, right? So that's the actual location of the of the address itself, right? And then of course we have viewpoint locations as well. So if you wanted to, um, there's actually ways in the uh, in the mapping you uh, in the mapping API to specify exactly the viewport as well if you wanted to use those. Okay, but I'm going to be really nice and lazy and uh, and just use the particular location, right? So notice geometry location. There's the latitude and there's the longitude. Okay, so again, coming back to our code, okay, what this actually says is, so we have an X path for the latitude, we have an X path for the longitude. The comma in there is, is what's required by the, uh, by the API, okay, so that's nothing special. But the fact that inside, a, inside an XSLT file, inside some string we use this particular notation, putting an X path inside um, of curly braces, what that actually does is when it generates the HTML, it's going to replace this with whatever that value is. Okay, and I can show you that. So if I go over to, um, if I go over and grab bnorth.html, if I open that up in Notepad++, you'll notice, okay, so there is that familiar looking URL, but as we move along, notice, here's the markers section, 
Okay, so marker says um, 26.24, etc., comma, negative 80. It's right, not these, right? Those are in fact replaced. So this is a shorthand for XSL value of. Okay, it's a and it's a handy way of doing that because in fact this is this is really the only way that I could find to get the um the actual value for those um for those two paths into the attribute part of the of the image okay and so that's why that exists notice it's inside the uh, the attribute ap attribute value source of the image tag itself okay and so that's sort of the little trick that uh, that will definitely save you uh, save you work